not a business. This is not a school. This is a sanctuary. This is a place, the habitation of the Shekinah glory of God. This is where people get healed on the inside and outside. Where God is alive. And people come to meet Him and fellowship with Him. It's not about learning a theory. It's not about a formula. The formula is, I love you, Papa. Abba, Father. What Jesus did on the cross, He died. And he took away the veil. He took away all boundaries from his children. And before, man lived in complete fear of God, of making the smallest mistake that they were going to go to hell. But when Jesus came, he said, no more. When you come to me, when you make me your Lord, I have taken the veil away, and now you can call God in heaven, Abba, Papa, Daddy, the one who loves you, the one who bounces you on your knee, the daddy that's always home, the daddy that's not yelling at you, the daddy that's not mad at you. He's the daddy who provides. He's the daddy who heals. He's the daddy who loves extravagantly. He forgives you. He is not demanding anything of you. He's not making you live a life that he's designed for you. He gives you the free will to choose, and he blesses you. That's daddy. And that's what was happening up here. And when you come as a child, he responds. But if you come as the governor, he ain't coming. If you're still in charge of who you are, he's not coming. You're never going to feel what these people felt up here today. You couldn't get wrecked like I was, crying my eyes out because daddy is just all over me. I don't care how old you are, I'm 50. And I feel more like a child now than I ever felt. Because of daddy. you got to understand that. That's why these kids are just mad about Jesus right now. They're going out there witnessing all over. Them. Where's Kevin go? Kevin, you're just overwhelmed by God right now, aren't you? Your whole life is consumed by God. And he has healed everything in you. And he has so much favor on your life. The Joseph anointing. Whatever Kevin puts his hand to, I hope it's always good. <laughs> because God's going to grow it. He's going to bless it and grow it. Because you can be smart, but without his favor, Amen. without his love, you ain't going nowhere. That's why this program you started is so prosperous. It was never you. He's using you, but that's because of the favor. Look at all the smart kids in your school. They didn't do what you did. It's favor. That's daddy love. You. And we can all come to dad. Oh, I'm on fire. <laughs> So the kids wanted to get together last night, and uh, they said, uh, Kevin, and uh, I guess it was your idea, uh, but he said, let's get them all together, and uh, we're going to pray and ask God for words of knowledge. <laughs> so they did, and uh, God filled up a, a several pages in, in notebooks uh, that the kids were given words of knowledge from God about the other kids. And they had confirmation in many cases from other kids. It wasn't just one person always saying the same thing. And some things, I guess, that people had known. The violin orchestra, right? Nobody, right? Julie, didn't you have that for uh, Lynn? She didn't know you played the violin. Wow. Praise God. Praise God. Kevin, do you have any other examples you want to share with us up here? Before I just... um, I'll think of them later. Okay. Um, and then uh, early, last, earlier in the week, uh, Christopher was at the table at my, uh, my sister-in-law's house, brother-in-law's house. And uh, I, when the kid, just a few kids were there, and I was talking about speaking in tongues and the power of God and how we need that. And uh, I said, Christopher, have you prayed in tongues lately? And he goes, oh, no, <laughs> not for a long time. So, I, you know, and the adults were outside, and I, I guess I'm starting to enjoy the kids so much, uh, you know, like hanging around you guys. Uh, so we start praying, and Christopher gets rebaptized, and the Holy Ghost, and the tears are calming down, and he's speaking his tongue so loud. I say, hallelujah. All right, now, a couple of days later, I, there's, uh, God's been speaking to me about a friend of mine in Peru, and uh, this young man is an engineer there. He used to come to a Bible study that I used to teach, and he's an engineer. I mean, he's not like a warm, you know, <laughs> he's an engineer. Nothing against engineers. But, uh, <laughs> 
So, and he's got a great job. He just got promoted and he's traveling to America and everything. He's, he's in his 20s. And um, I felt the Lord telling me there are two young men there that need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They need the fire of God and the speaking tongues. And he's one of them. So, uh, he, I'm on, say, um, I don't know what he called, Skype, well, whatever. He, he chats me and he says, could you pray for me? And I'm thinking, it's time. Typically, people in other countries like to talk to me at 12 o'clock at night, <laughs> which is why I'm always tired. So uh, it's around 11.30, 12 o'clock, and he said, I need you to pray for me because I'm going to lose my job. So otherwise, I was going to like see it. i got to go to bed and brush my teeth, so okay. So I get to Skype, and uh, I can see him, and he sees me, and he's got his phone because there's something wrong with his other internet connection, so he's got his smartphone. And he tells me how he's getting fired, and... Actually, I did have a word of knowledge for him about that situation a little bit. And, um, and then I said, you know, do you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And he goes, uh, okay. <laughs> Remember that day, don't you? <laughs> and uh, so I start praying. Now, I, I prayed for other people over the phone in other countries, and they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So this wasn't the first time. But it was just so cool. He just, he doesn't even know what's happening to him. And you can see the phone, like, you know, all I see it spinning. And, and, and I hear this, you know, I hear the tongues coming up very strongly. And, and then after a while, I said, okay, dude, you know, how do you feel? Goes, what, what happened? I don't know. <laughs> so I, I said, feel really good. I'm, I'm on fire. I don't know what's going on. I said, you're receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So I told him to read Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 19, Acts chapter 2. There are more. I reminded him that John the Baptist called Jesus the baptizer of fire, and he will baptize you with fire, whereas John baptized with water. So all you Christians that have only received a water baptism, Jesus is the one who wants to baptize you, not the pastor putting you in water. Right? That's a supernatural baptism, and only Jesus can do it. And you need it, right? You just have it. How do you feel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that is the intimate exchange when God is not only outside you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke the spirit of sleep and stupor. In the name of Jesus Christ, you get out of here. Amen. Holy Ghost, I ask you to come and touch all hearts, that all hearts are open, all minds are ready to receive. And in the name of Jesus, I command the veil to lift. Holy Ghost, touch and inform and change and transform us. Um, so... Where was it? Oh, thanks for paying attention. <laughs> I don't know where I what was I saying? Somebody told me. Oh yeah, okay. So but we are gonna do a water baptism. I have to check with the host of the house first, but I'm hoping they'll let us do it on one September. Okay. Alright, so if you have not been water baptized yet, that's a good thing to do. People actually get delivered from demonic strongholds many times when they get water baptized. So there is a spiritual aspect to that. Um, so one September at the Trums' new house and their swimming pool, before it gets cold, but it's all right with Mr. Trum. Okay. Um, we have two people already who want to... Actually, now, these people had been baptized when they were younger, but they really didn't know the Lord. Now they do. And now they want to do it again. So it, remember, it's a change in your heart. It's a decision you make. That's when it's time to be water baptized. So anybody else who wants to do that, please come. I know my mother-in-law, uh, when she got water baptized, she was slain in the spirit and just floated up to the top of the swimming pool. So cool. And before that, I wasn't, I wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost, so I didn't know what was happening. Anyway, where was I? Okay. So, so, uh, now, we're talking about the atmosphere of heaven. We just experienced it, so God did it for us. God's so good because we don't want to be a, a book-knowing Christian. We want to be a God-knowing Christian. The Bible gets us to Jesus. It helps us understand. And the Holy Spirit, with the Word of God, makes Him alive. If all you know is a book, you ain't got the living God. You've got a historical record of God. What you want is an intimate, personal, ongoing exchange with a God who loves you, knows you, completes you, feels you, touches you. And the best way to do that is when we have the atmosphere of heaven to be released. 
Now, how does that happen? Let's find out. It happened the way it happened today. What were we doing? We're praising God. Now, you can praise God with all kinds of music. It can be Benny Hinn piano music. And the Holy Ghost will come and heal people in wheelchairs. Or it can be loud music. It can be the music the kids play. And as long as your heart desperately desires the living God, you will open up a channel and the freedom for heaven to move in and out into that place. Let's look at Haggai 2.5. Oh, I want to show you this before I do this. Sound like that? thousands of gemstones in his sanctuary. Where are these swings coming from? Are they real? And why are they appearing at all? As remarkable as these events may sound, the story hasn't been featured in any significant news coverage. And indeed, aside from a few Christian media outlets, no one seems to be giving these incredible events any notice at all. The pastor of this church is Dennis Rojas, a man with a rather eventful background. Now at 16 years old, I received Christ as my personal and exclusive savior. I lived 12 years as a homosexual. I was a professional transvestite. But today I would like to thank God for the liberation and the transformation that he has done in my life through this 32 years that I have served the Lord. One of the reasons Pastor Dennis believes these gems are supernaturally appearing is that this church has dedicated itself to the focused worship and praise of God. These gems began appearing three years ago when Dennis became the pastor of the House of Restoration and Mercy. In this three years, we have had supernatural experiences, manifestations like the oil from the Holy Ocean, Manifestations of gold, silver, sapphires, topaz, emerald, rubies. God has sent the angel of precious stones and we have had manifestations of diamonds. This is really something, you know, it's really a blessing and we're really, it's uh, amazing. I mean, we're, we're amazed all the time. Pastor, he always feels like, you know, he's like a kid. Yeah, he comes out. The angel's in there. The angel's in there. This church has grown with physical healings, supernatural healings, creating miracles in the middle of the congregation. And all of this God has done to glorify His name, to establish His name on earth, and to tell a lot of people from different places, nations, that our God is real and true and that the time of miracles has not passed. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, and for all eternity. And this I believe. The first supernatural occurrence in the House of Restoration was the mysterious appearance of oil on the walls and the ceiling of the church. A few months later, oil began to inexplicably saturate and pour out of the Bible on the lectern. When uh, the oil was manifested on the Bible, with the, with the, uh, the smell of rose, significa la 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 fragancia del perfume de del maestro. Entonces se detuvo por el todo por el tercero que comenzó a botar la sangre. Esta cosa blanca que ve aquí es 
eso es le, en una carne la perla, eso significa la, la, la preparación, el, el proceso de la preparación del ministerio. Entonces se detuvo como por un mes, sin botar aceite. Entonces Dios nos dijo por un profeta en Panamá que venía un aceite con una fragancia nueva y con un propósito. Entonces que ese aceite era para la sanidad. Entonces come, comenzó a botar aceite con olor, a, a, con olor y aroma a, a, a mirra, que significa el sufrimiento y el padecimiento del ministerio. Y eso es lo que ha estado manando hasta ahora. A few months later, the church was in a prayer meeting, interceding for the city. Say something. You have it? Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, you have a lot. Honey, do you look at your hands, sweetheart? <laughs> oh, yeah, she has it. Oh, my goodness. Is your name Kylie? Do you see it, sweetheart? Do you see? Look at her hand. Keisha. Sorry, Keisha. Do you have it, sweetie? Yeah. You have it, baby. Can you see it now? Hallelujah! You got it? Yeah, you got it. See? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh. These are very small, very fun. We stay now, now, no one. <laughs> Very tiny. Yes, you do. 
They're very small. Can you see them? So you got it. Oh! Yes, you got it. Oh, you have a lot. You have it, Sadri. They're very small. Yes, man. Because you're in the dark. Yes, you do. Yeah, right. They're very small. Are you need reading books? Yeah. No, I, I saw it over here. So they come a little. How are you doing? Oh, yeah. Oh, you're in the dark. Yes, you do. I just saw one. They're not many, and they're very tiny. Oh, my goodness. You have it on your thumb. It's cool, dude. <laughs> oh, Lord. God. Thank you. We praise your mighty name, Jesus. We praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
sermon. This is your sermon. What are you talking about? Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Adoration of a loving God. Now you're going to ask why. Why this? Okay. Haggai 2, 5, 8 to 9. Lord, I don't want to skip over this awesome thing. Lord. We praise your name, but we only have two hours. We have 30 minutes, God. Uh, we revel in your name. We are so happy, God, that you are our groom, and we are your bride, and we love you. We love you. We love you, God. Thank you, Jesus. According to the promise that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit stands and abides in the midst of you. His spirit has just poured out gold dust on our hands. Fear not. He loves us. Fear not. He is not come to harm us. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. That's why they belong to him. All those who worship money will never understand this. It comes from God. And he will pour it out on you whenever and wherever he wants to do it. But when we're adoring, worshiping him, he just sprinkles it out. We didn't pay any money today to have this. No work. He just blessed us with gold dust. The latter glory of this house with its successor to which Jesus came shall be greater than the former. Says the Lord of hosts, you're in the latter house. You are in the new covenant with Jesus. And the glory of God is greater. It is greater. And in this place will I give peace and prosperity, thank God, to the Trumps. Prosperity to our family in Arizona. My brother-in-law just got a $20,000 raise. Hallelujah. <laughs> and says the Lord of hosts, says the Lord of hosts, oh, you're happy. You are happy. <laughs> the silver in mine is mine and the gold is mine. He has no limit to the amount of money he has. Do not worry. Do not fear. Give your tithe. Give your offering. Take care of the poor. Take care of those who are in greater need than you, as you have done, and he will reward you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But with the right heart. Yeah. He's not an investment banker. He's a love banker. As we love and adore him, he pours it out. This is awesome, guys. You really don't quite no, maybe, but it's awesome. <laughs> we, we cannot make this happen. You see what I'm saying? It has to come from heaven. The atmosphere of heaven is in this room. That's why you smell the sweetness that you can't describe. And you too. And a couple times me. <laughs> um, that's why, because that's what it's like in heaven. The streets are paved with gold. The streets are paved with gold. There are jewels on the walls of heaven. And there is a fragrance that comes across everywhere. It's the fragrance of God. It's his love. His love. Psalm 68, 13. Though you lie down among the sheepfolds, we are his sheep, you will be like the wings of a dove covered with silver and her feathers with yellow gold. Christina, that is why your hands are covered with gold. Because God is speaking scripture to you. This is taking Logos, the written word of God, and making it Rhema, the living and powerful word of God, where it manifests on our hands. His word becomes reality. And when we don't believe, when we don't invite the spirit of God, we don't get this. Because he says, true worshipers will worship me in spirit and truth in the name of Jesus Stuber God. Um, true worshipers will worship me in spirit and truth. And when we do, you see, we have elevated ourselves over the minds of man, over theology, over doctrine. We have put ourselves into the living word of God, and the manifest glory of God has fallen on us today. And why this? Exodus 25, 17 to 18. You shall make a mercy seat. He's talking about the Ark of the Covenant. These are God's instructions to Moses on the Ark of the Covenant, which is where the presence of God was to have been during the Old Covenant. 
You shall make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two and a half cubits shall be its length, and a cubit and a half its width. And you shall make two cherubim, those are mighty angels, of gold. Of hammered work, you shall make them at the two ends of the mercy seat. The mercy seat is covered by gold, and so are you. Do you see that? You are the eagle. You are the, uh, you will be like the wings of a dove covered with, with silver and gold. That's why he's showing us this. Where is Jesus right now? Is he in a box? Where is he? He's in this box. And he's even outside this box. And when we get together, when the Jesus in us meets the Jesus in the atmosphere, we get gold hands. It's a powerful explosion of the God who's in you and the God who's outside you. And it's a love relationship. The bride and the groom come together and the manifest glory, the power, the love is poured out in miracles. That's why people get healed also in this kind of environment. Do you feel better? Do you feel happy? Yes. That's God. The presence of God brings joy, relief, freedom, healing, happiness, hope, faith. Do you want that? You can't live without it. You're kidding me. You end up to be a mad, mad jerk, because I used to be one of them. You get angry at people, or selfish and greedy. That all comes because you're not satisfied. You don't have that love relationship with God. You don't have him inside, and you don't even, he's outside trying to get in, you won't let him in. Now what I told the, the man I prayed for in Peru, the reason I was so excited to pray for him was, I said, I, I prayed for his situation about losing the job and some other things. And I said, how do you feel? Normally people feel hot when I pray for them. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the anointing. Everybody here can have that anointing, and, and many already do or will have it. Everybody should have it. But anyway, he said, I feel hot. And he said, hotter than I feel when I worship. Now he goes to a Calvary Chapel church in Peru. But it's a kind of normal stuff. They don't do like this, the gold on the hands and fall down. So um, he said, but when I worship, I feel warm inside. I said, really? I said, that's the God inside you who wants to come out of you. He wants to come out of us. So when I started to pray, that's when the fire broke loose. And he didn't know where he was or what was asked. How? Lawrence, I'm not sure you, uh, do you really think you received the full baptism of the Holy Spirit that other day? What was that a weird brain? I think we need to get three to do that one. <laughs> because when he comes, there's no doubt. I mean, it is. Uh, that's why I have people saying hallelujah. Because instead of just making noises with the mouth. Because when they're saying hallelujah, and then the Holy Spirit comes on them, they can't say hallelujah anymore. It becomes another language, and they aren't doing it. But if you have somebody just saying A, B, C, D, you don't know. You don't know when the Holy Spirit takes over. But when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you will not be mistaken. How did you feel the other night, Christopher, when the Holy Spirit came on you? Happy? Why were you crying? <laughs> Big boys don't. <laughs> it's the presence of God. That's why I was crying. I couldn't control myself. There was no sadness in my heart. Right? You're just overwhelmed by the presence. Now, in the Bible, when Shekinah glory fell, which they didn't know I was going to preach on this, and yet they chose the perfect song. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. When Shekinah glory fell on the temple. Oh, and by the way, let me, let me do this first. 1 Peter 3, 3 to 4. Do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair and the putting on of gold jewelry, or the clothing you wear. But let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a genuine and quiet spirit which in God's sight is very precious. Uh, he will pour out a gold thing on our hand because we value the gold. We think it's a precious commodity, and it is, especially when he gives it to us. But what he values, the jewelry he values, the gold that God values, hey man, when you create gold and jewels, as many as you want, they don't have quite as much value as scripture, right? So he creates them. But what he can't create is your heart to be precious and adoring him. 
your heart calling out to Jesus, calling out to Daddy God and saying, I love you, Daddy. I'm crazy about you, Daddy. That's a jewel. That is as much uh, of a miracle for God, going back the other way, as what we just experienced. You understand that? Because he has given us a free will to choose how much we want to adore him, how much we want to love him and come close to him. We didn't cause this gold dust to come on our hands. It was his response to our love. The bride and the groom. Now, I mentioned this last time when I talked about the groom. You've got to read the Song of Solomon. I was going to read it today, but we're out of time. Go home and understanding what you know about the ravenous love of God over the fact that he sees you as his precious bride. Read the Song of Solomon. It's all about you and him. And it's about passion. Passionate love. Song of Solomon 4.9. You have ravished. This is God talking. He may call himself Solomon in these passages, but it's God's words. You have ravished my heart and given me courage, my sister. That's us. My promised bride. You have ravished my heart and given me courage. We affect the uh, countenance of God. We affect how he feels with one look, which is what we gave him today. Just one look, Jesus, from your eyes. With one jewel of your necklace. We are a jewel to God. Our adoration is that jewel. He goes crazy over us when we love Him, when we step out of our own thinking, out of our own selfishness, out of our own ways, and say, Jesus, Jesus, I love you. And why not? It's freedom. What do you have to do? Is there something? Exodus 33, 11 to 14. Now, this is the relationship I would encourage all of us to cultivate. It is Moses talking to God. Now, look at this dialogue and what's happened. Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face. That's what he wants. Talk to him. That's what prayer is. It isn't chanting. It isn't any of this garbage. It's Jesus. I've got a big problem and you're a big God. Help me. Pour out your love on me, God. Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face. As a man speaks to his friend. Because with Jesus, now we are all friends with God. Coming through Jesus. When Moses turned again into the camp, his assistant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, would not depart from the tent because he was infatuated with the relationship that Moses and God have. And a young person is drawn in to a real relationship with God. Daddies and mommies, we set our example for our children by having that face-to-face, -face, real, passionate relationship with God. And Joshua's, the Joshua's in our families, are drawn into that relationship because they're mesmerized by their parents humbling themselves and being in love with the God, with the God who's real in love. Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up this people. Look, he's challenging the Lord. Lord, you told me to do this. You told me to do that. Man, this is a big job, God. I don't get it. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. I can't do this alone. Don't you feel that way? Yeah. I do. Man, I need him. And the one he sends to help us is the Holy Ghost. And not just to Moses anymore, because Jesus unlocked that box. He let loose the Holy Ghost to everybody who wants him. And that's why we speak in tongues individually. During that moment, the big fire comes down like Pentecost, and it breaks off into individual tongues of fire and falls on each one. And that's power. Yet you have said, I know you by name. And you have also found favor in my sight. He's repeating what God told him. He's like, you told me this. You promised me this. Where's the deal? That's okay. Ask God. Ask God. Don't get bitter. Don't get angry. But you talk to him. Now, therefore, if I have found favor in your sight, please show me now your ways. This is very important. That I may know you in order to find favor in your sight. So many people want to learn about God. They want to go to a Bible study and study all the little words. Great, that's awesome. But if you miss Him in the words, if you don't know His ways, it's not just what He did, 
we can read the Bible and say, oh, oh, God blessed Peter, God blessed Paul, God did this to Moses. That's great. That's a history book. Why? Why does God pour gold dust on his children? Those are his ways. You see, we want to go deeper. Deeper, deeper, always deeper with God. There's so much. He's a mystery. He's a mystery waiting to be enjoyed and discovered through our passion and desire to learn about Him. Why, God? Always ask Him, why do you do this? Chew on the Word of God. When you read the Bible, ask why. Ask Him why. Why does He talk about silver and gold on the wings of a bird, on the dove? For today... <laughs> so, so that I can make that core of that relationship in his word to see how the Ark of the Covenant was covered by gold and those of us who are his doves are also covered by gold. It, gold signifies purity. It signifies royalty. It signifies your inheritance. It signifies his adoration for you because it's a precious thing. And he put it on his children today. It's not on a ring. It's on you. Because you are what matters to him. And all he's asking you is, will I matter to you? Will you love me? Will you adore me? That's all. That's what Christianity is all about. Christianity. That is our religion. Loving God, receiving his love, and giving it away to other people. That's why the Holy Ghost, who's in us, is fire, power, and love. Wants to come out of us. He's no longer in that Ark of the Covenant. He has a big job to do, and he wants to use us. Sons and daughters of God who are passionately, madly in love with Jesus. That's why the same Holy Ghost is in Jessica that is in me. As you crave God, as you get old, you don't even have to get older, just more passionate about God, the fire of God, the power of God is going to come out of you. You can do it right now. But the difference between you and me is I spend every moment I can worshiping the Lord. I'm not taking it. I know you're growing into that, honey. And I know you love God. And I know you worship Him. But you're at the beginning. I'm just, that's, I'm just saying, look broader. Look more deep. Look deeper. There's nothing to stop you from having an overwhelming experience with God for the rest of your life. And for Him to use you to heal, save, and deliver. And to bring the kingdom of heaven wherever you go. 2 Chronicles 5, 13 to 14. And when the trumpeters and singers were joined in unison, making one sound to be heard and praising and thanking the Lord, and when they lifted up their voices, we got to be loud, folks. Be loud for Jesus. You can do it at a concert. You can do it for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. With the trumpets and cymbals and other instruments for song and praise the Lord, saying, For he is good. He is good for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. Hallelujah. Then the house of the Lord, this is the house of the Lord, am I right? Was filled with a cloud, a cloud, that's the glory of God, so that the priest could not stand. Pastor couldn't stand. I could hardly get up onto that chair while we were worshiping. You see, the manifest presence of God. And the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Yeah. Worship Him. Worship Him. Your life will change completely. The glory. The glory of God is in This is a God that you can enjoy. Yes. That's why I can't wait to go down into my basement and praise Him. You have a. You have a. a you have a YouTube, you have a computer, you've got a stereo. Pour out your heart. Pour out your heart to God. Now this is what they did. This is how the house got filled. And I want this house filled. I want this house and my house and inside me filled. So I can praise him individually even when you guys are not around. And the glory comes on me. This morning I was preparing the slides. I was making the Thai slides. And I had a song called Dance by Susie Yarrari. I said that name right. And uh, I'm not really paying attention, and all of a sudden I start weeping. I wasn't thinking about any of this stuff. And then God starts showing me all the answered prayers he had just been giving me recently, things that I had been waiting for, and I bawled my eyes. You see, when the glory comes on, you can't help yourself. You're overwhelmed by his presence. If you're not experiencing this, that's
That's why today, I want you to crave that experience more than anything else. Because everything else falls far short. You'll never understand God until this happens. Now, but I don't care if you get a PhD in blah, blah, blah theology. It doesn't matter. Paul, well, we use Peter was a fisherman. Okay, so now we recognize these great things about God. We adore them. This is why we love Him. So we sing praises, praises. We praise Him. We thank Him. Thank you, Father. Always begin your prayers with thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, Father, for this goal. Thank you for my brothers and sisters. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for taking me out of the home of an alcoholic. Thank you for taking me out of anger. Thank you for taking me out of a divorce home. Thank you for taking me out of rage and anger. Thank you for taking me. Amen. Hallelujah. And he is good. Remember, always he is good. He is love. His mercy. Focus on these things. And loving kindness endure forever. You focus, focus over and over and over again. Keep telling your soul, tell your family, tell your friends, this is my God. And then the house was filled. The house was filled with glory. I want my house filled with glory. I want the atmosphere in my home. So I want to get rid of anger. I want to get rid of rage. I want to get rid of pornography. I want to get rid of uh, uh, loneliness. I want to get rid of rejection. I want to get rid of, eh? you see what I'm saying? Make it a holy sanctuary and your kids will prosper. Your wife and your husband will prosper. Your friends who come into the house will feel peace when they come in the house. I was so great when, the, I don't know if you were there that day, Ting, down in my basement and everybody's on the floor and then my 80 some year old grandmother came downstairs and she couldn't stand, she fell on the door. Were you there that day? His body is falling. That's what you want, man. You want that all over your house because you want to smell the fragrance. You want to see the gold dust in your home, in your kitchen, in your bedroom, in the bathroom. Especially that fragrance would be nice. <laughs> Matt, Hebrews 2 11 to 13. For both he who sanctifies, making men holy, remember, we don't make ourselves holy, we pursue sanctification, but God makes us holy. And those who are sanctified all have one Father. Jesus and us all have the same Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. For this reason, he is not ashamed to call them brothers. Brethren. So Jesus calls all of us brothers and sisters. Or brothers. For he says, I will declare your, so Jesus is still talking, the Father's name to my brothers. Jesus declares his name to us in the midst of what? Of the worshiping congregation, not the dead congregation, not the serious congregation, not the, you know, it is the worshiping congregation. If all of us are worshiping God, you're going to see more than this. You're going to see those gems. You're going to have the oil poured out. You're going to see people getting healed in their chairs. You're going to see all of that. I mean, we've seen a lot, but we're going to see more, more. Because when we praise him, really praise him, he's here. He inhabits our worship. I will sing. This is Jesus talking. Get this right. Jesus is saying, I will sing hymns of praise to you. Jesus joins us in the way. And I see this when I'm worshiping alone. In fact, last night, when we had everybody worshiping at uh, Christina Wood's house, all the kids are there. And all of a sudden, I, have, I get these visions when I'm worshiping or praying in tongues, usually. And I see a, a circle where everybody's clapping like this. And in the middle, guess who's in the middle? Jesus. Jesus! And he's making moves. He, he, he's, he, he's, he, he's, you've got to understand. You've got to see. This is who Jesus really is. He's a happy, loving, joyful, pleasure-filled God. He's a pleasure-filled God. Do you know what his name is? Leah had a child. Leah had a child. And this is Genesis 29, 35. Again, Leah was not well-liked, and she was always the second banana behind uh, Rachel. And, and, but um, anyway, so, so uh, Leah says this, we guys Leah. And she conceived and bore a son, and she said, now will I praise the Lord. So she called his name Judah, which means? Praise. That's why we need the Amplified Bible. <laughs> praise. Hallelujah. Then for a time she sees Mary. She was blessed by God because she had been the second child, the second wife. 
But God said, I'm going to give you a miracle child. And she kept popping out babies. Revelation 5, 5. And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. Remember Pastor Stephen? Roar! That breaks bondage. We saw that. You roar like the lion of the tribe of Judah, and you will break bondage. The demons hate them. The root of David has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the lion of the tribe of praise. Do you see power, power, lion power, miracle working power, God power comes through your praise. That is Jesus' other name. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of praise. You release the kingdom, the glory, the power in praise because you're releasing Jesus. I just read to you in Hebrews, he is in the praise. And while we're praising, he is also praising God, praising his father. That's why praise is not this place. Praise is this thing. It's, it's let loose. It's showing God. It's expressing the God in you with all the joy, the happiness of God coming out of you. That's praise. That's the line of Judah. These are not soldiers. Oh, I hope nobody sees me singing. I don't sing very well. Put my hand up. Let the lion roar. Let the lion roar. And you know there's dancing in heaven? The Jewish people dance when they worship God. And they praise Him. Praise Him. You've got to understand this. This is what it's all about. Just forget your Catholic school education for a while. Forget the times that you went to Mass with the stained glass windows and the priest up here in the rooms, okay? Forget your Buddhism. Forget whatever wretched thing was from your past and know this. The Lion of the tribe of Judah is alive and he lives inside you and he wants to come out and he wants to manifest his glory and he wants to spread his love and his power and the kingdom of heaven. The Lion roars when we praise him. told, weep no more. He has broken the seal. And in Revelation, when all of those plagues are coming on the evil people, all of Satan's kingdom crumbling, one piece at a time, and God is going to say, enough! And he's going to roll up the heavens and the earth, and he's going to spit them out. And all those that are his will be praising him for eternity. They will be singing and worshiping and dancing and feeling the love of God. And all those who did not come to him are going to be thrown into the lake of fire. But for us, we are free. We are in love. We are valued. We have hope. We have faith. We have power. We have healing. We have a living God. Amen, amen, amen. Luke 17, 20 to 21. Asked by the Pharisees, oh, they're lovely people. When the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, to them by saying the kingdom of God does not come with signs to be observed with uh, visible display. Nor will people say, look, here it is, or see, it is there. For behold, the kingdom of God is it's within you, in your hearts, and among you, surrounding you. If you want to see the real living God, it comes out of the heart. It's not me telling you. It's you desiring. It's you seeking. Individually. I am here to encourage you. I am here to pray for you. But you have to desire Him. So when those who really seek Him, they come. They don't worry about people looking at them. They'll come up here and they'll praise Him. They'll come up here and they'll thank Him. They'll do whatever it takes to get the glory, to get close to God, to express their heartfelt love because they don't care what men think about them. Glory to God. All right, we have five minutes. So just uh, praise God. You can come up. I'll try to pray for uh, a couple people. And, um, uh, and then we'll go and we'll get food. And it is happy birthday for Manu. Oh, let's pray for Manu. That's it. Manu, come up. Because she's going to Thailand. We're not going to see her for five months. Can, can. Yeah. Ah. 
Anybody want to just, yeah, please come up and Oh man, we love you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. I bless you as a witness, as a witness of love and the power of God as you go back to Thailand. Sound the trumpet, sound the alarm. Let them know that there's a God who loves them. Let them know there's a God who heals them. And we anoint these kids in the name of Jesus. Release the power, release the kingdom, release the fire of God on all those who come to you. Let them feel the love of God. Don't be afraid. Stand up like a roaring lion. The lion of Judah is inside you. Fire and power and fire and power. I bless you with a safe trip, a productive journey. And Lord, I ask you to use her as a harvester in Thailand. Let her bring in the lost. Let her have your voice on her tongue. Let her know the word of God and let her release a true loving power of God. In the name of Jesus, we love you, Manuel. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. And Jesus loves you. And Jesus loves you. And Jesus loves you. And fire on you. And fire on the anointed fire from the top of your head down to your toes. Feel the glory. Be the glory. Be the image of Christ. Be the image of Christ. Release the kingdom of heaven. In the name of Jesus.